Have you fallen out of your cleaning routines and you're struggling to get back into the swing of things? Today, I'm gonna to help you rediscover your cleaning rhythm. In a matter of three short weeks, you can change your habits, whether it's adopting a new habit or breaking old habits. Today, we're gonna to explore how to get back into cleaning regularly. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel and into my home. So you're jumping right in on my morning routine as I reset my house after vacation. I don't know about you, but when I come home from vacation, I need a couple of days to decompress. So my suitcase stays packed and I just don't fuss with any of my routines. But after a couple of days, I have to get in here and I have to reset the house so that I'm starting fresh. Now, I make sure that before I leave on vacation, my house is completely reset, so that way when I come home, I'm coming home to a clean space. So, in today's video, you're going to watch me reset my home after vacation and before a new week. And I'm also going to share with you an awesome recipe that is perfect for the cold weather. Okay, so let's get busy. As you can see, I'm making my bed. This is part of my morning routine that I do every morning. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to unpack all of my clothes and things like that out of my suitcase. Now, I washed all my clothes before um, I left from the resort, with the exception of that one small bag that I just put down. Not the blue one, but the one that's closer to the footboard. Um, that has my bathing suit and things like that in it. So um, I will need to wash that. But other than that, everything else has been washed and um, put into these, um, these cubes, these packing cubes. Absolutely love packing cubes. If you've not tried packing cubes before, I would highly, highly suggest them. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to purchase the ones that my daughter has. And they are the packing cubes that um, you also, it has like an extra zipper to where it um, compresses them even more. So once you fill them, you zip that extra zipper and it really compresses the clothes. So um, I'm going to try those out for you guys and I'm going to let you know how those work. Um, I'm going back on vacation sometime next year. I know for a fact that we're all going back to Cabo in June. We invited um, some of our kids and our grandkids to go, the ones who can go. We are booking four rooms for um, family and um, grandkids and all them to come and hang out in June at Cabo. So um, I will be going in June, but I know that I'm going on another vacation. I can't quite remember where right now but anyways I'm going to get those compression um, little bags to, to pack all of my clothes in and I'm going to let you guys know how those work. So in last week's video you guys saw me packing all these clothes and some of you asked me Michelle actually how many of these clothes did you wear and honestly I hardly wore any of them. Now when we go to Maui or um, Florida or things like that I wear all the clothes that I bring. Um, I set out from Monday to Friday or Monday to Monday or Sunday to Sunday, whatever the week is that we're staying there. I set out the clothes of what I'm expected to wear each day. However, I wasn't really sure what we were going to be doing in um, Cabo. Um, to be honest with you, I was a little nervous about leaving the resort and driving anywhere. In fact, we only had our rental car one day and we turned it in because I was too nervous to be driving anywhere. Um, the streets are crazy there. And um, I just didn't know what was safe, where was safe to drive, where, you know, I shouldn't be at all. So I just felt more comfortable staying at the resort. And when you're at the resort, you just stay at the pools. They had several pools. Um, so we rotated around in the pools, the different areas. And um, that's where we were happy to be. So I mainly wore my bathing suit and my cover up. So next time we go to Cabo San Lucas, I'll be bringing less outfits and bringing more bathing suits and cover ups. So that should be fun. Anyways, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just um, put away all these clothes. Again, I washed everything that I did wear um, there at the resort. So everything is clean with the exception of my bathing suit and the cover up. So I've also gotten several comments and emails asking how to get started in a cleaning routine without being completely overwhelmed. So today I'm going to break it down for you into a three week quick start. Now I've made a printable. So if you want a printable, go ahead and email me and I will send it to you. I'm also going to try to go ahead and send it to all of 
um, you who have already emailed me for other printables. I will try to see if I can get that um, sent over to you so you don't have to re-send um, me an email. If I can't, go ahead and send me an email and I will shoot it to you also. So today we're going to talk about how to start a cleaning routine when you have no idea where to start. you're thinking give me what you're drinking tell me what you're thinking give me what you're drinking you and me we got something special baby you and me you and me i can think this was never meant to happen you and Okay, so I'm just going to do a quick vacuum here in the room. Now, um, I got contacted by the same vacuum manufacturer um, of the vacuum that I'm using there. Remember, I got this one a few weeks ago and I showed it to you guys. Well, they contacted me and asked me if I would do a review on their newer vacuum um, that they are going to be promoting, um, I think around Halloween, they said that they want to do a promotion on it. So next week, I am going to be showing you that new vacuum. It just came in yesterday. I'm going to unbox it and I'm going to try it out and I'm going to give you a good review on that new vacuum. I know that it's another vacuum that's similar to this where it does not have a beater bar. So it's not, um, fantastic for carpet however it's really good for um, hardwood floors tiled floors things like that now I do use it on this carpet um, because it does suck up it just does not have a beater bar that's really going to um, you know leave those nice lines that we like and things like that but um, I love this vacuum it's lightweight um, it would be perfect for an elderly person um, I think I'm going to give um, either this one or the other one to my mother-in-law to use in her little casita that is attached here um, to our home um, because it's nice and lightweight for her. So, okay, I'm going to continue on in my um, morning routine and I'm going to empty the dishwasher and then I'm going to reload the breakfast dishes.
Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about how to start a cleaning routine. Now, this is for um, somebody who maybe even had a cleaning routine and you've just fallen off the bandwagon, you want to get back on, or someone who's never had a cleaning routine and really just wants to learn how to set up one. Okay, so one of the first things that I suggest is that you determine your level of clean and tidy. We all have a different level of clean and tidy. So go ahead and determine your comfort level on a scale of one to three. Now one is showroom ready. You want your home to be clean enough to be in the parade of homes. Now have you ever been to the parade of homes? Those things are so cool. I always have so much fun doing that. Okay, and then number two is you're always ready for company, but a little clutter in the hot spots is no big deal to you. So basically the bathrooms are cleaned, so no worries if company comes over. However, um, it's no big deal to you if you have a little bit of toothpaste in the sink or maybe your towels are disheveled. None of that is a big deal to you, okay? And then number three is you want to have the basics covered. So basically you want your beds made, your dishes done, the floor swept, and the bathrooms look decent. All right, so these are your three levels. You determine um, which level that you're in, okay? I have you do this because these levels will determine how much work that you're gonna need to put in to maintain your comfort level. So let's say maybe you're a new mom and you need to go ahead and lower your level until you can adjust to the new demands. Or maybe you're a homeschool mom and you know that you require a clean and tidy home so that you can be fully present with your schooler. Or maybe you work outside the home and time to clean is limited. So you need to go ahead and find a program that's going to be efficient for you. There's just so many variables in this and there's, and there's no shame in any level as long as that level is comfortable to you and your family. Okay, so when I got home, I went ahead and I made an order for um, the groceries that we're gonna need for the week. So I'm gonna get in the refrigerator and I'm gonna get out everything in here that is past date or um, just not any good anymore. So that's what I'm gonna be doing now. And then I'm gonna get in there and I'm going to clean the refrigerator so that way everything is nice and clean when I bring in the new groceries. Advice. Don't think twice. I want. 
Now, if you're starting from square one after a time of being away from doing your cleaning routines, my recommendations would be to hire a cleaning crew to do a deep clean of your house. <laughs> Just joking. Well, maybe not. <laughs> But if you can afford it, that would be a great start to getting back into your cleaning routines. Then at that point, you would just go ahead and follow my weekly cleaning schedule. But if you're like most of us, you will need to be your own cleaning crew. And with that, I would suggest building a solid morning and a solid evening routine. Now, these two routines will get you back into the habit of taking care of your kitchen, your bedroom, your floors, your bathroom, and your clothes. Okay, so this is your three week quick start cleaning checklist that I'll be emailing to you. Okay, when you first get it, I want you to start on week one where you're gonna be building your morning routines. My suggestions would be to make the beds, do a load of laundry, unload your dishwasher, load your breakfast dishes, and then tidy your bathroom. And in the evening, you wanna reload the dishwasher with your dinner dishes and get it started clean the stove top and sink, wipe down your counters, and put away the laundry if you haven't already put that load away. Now, go ahead and consistently do this every day for the next seven days. Okay, you're gonna be building a habit by doing this. This is gonna to help to keep your bathroom tidy. It's gonna to help to keep your, your um, clothes done because you're gonna be doing a load of day. Um, it's gonna to help to keep your kitchen cleaned, your, your sink empty. Um, your counters clean, things like that. These are just habits that are good to um, stay in so that way you you have a pretty consistently clean and tidy home, okay? And then we will move on to week two, which is gonna be a bit more challenging and we'll talk about that here in a second. Hard cold, whisper gently saying You don't know how to keep on trying It shows Something's changing in me, it shows Now I'm highly breathing There's no bad luck, way to go Move like a Roma, without a goal Bad goals, tell us we pray to get this Now we pray to get this Ooh, 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 ooh But we both know So why can't we just get it? Tonight. 
I absolutely love having a nice clean refrigerator, especially when it's nice and wiped out. Um, I can tell you that I do miss using bleach. I used to clean with bleach. Everything was bleached. Um, and I haven't done that in quite a few years. However, I do miss the smell of cleaning the inside of my refrigerator with bleach. To me, it just smelled extra clean in there, but I know it's not good for you, so I stopped doing it. Um, but I am using a microfiber cloth. All you have to do is wet it, and um, it really grabs all the things that you need it to grab, um, and you're not adding any chemicals into um, your refrigerator or whatever you're cleaning. So um, love these microfiber cloths. I will link them for you. Um, down in the description box that way if you're looking for some new microfibers these ones are great they have a gazillion reviews I'm trying to remember how many thousands of reviews um, you'd have to go check and see I will put it um, down in the description box but they are really that good and the reviews will let you know anyways um, this is the drawer that I like to put all of my grandkids um, snackies in when they come over they get into my snacky drawer and um, they also get into the refrigerator and get their cold snacks. I also keep my cheese in here and the lunch meat. Um, I put the avocados in there before I left because I didn't want them to go bad when I was gone. So I put them in there and, and um, I'll probably go ahead and keep them in there so that I have them last a few more days. Um, if I put them out on the counter, they will go right quick. You know, I tried that A2 um, milk. I thought maybe I might like it um, since I stopped having milk um, when I was on that portion of the diet that I was on. Um, still on the diet, I'm just not on that portion anymore. Um, and I really never drank it. Um, I've gotten out of the habit um, of wanting milk or um, needing it the way that I thought that I needed it before. So the milk just kind of went bad because my husband wasn't drinking it and he likes almond milk. And um, I've switched over to almond milk myself, and the A2 just didn't get drank. So anyways, it's not that it's a bad milk. It's just one that um, I just never took a liking to. So anyways, I'm going to go ahead and get out all the things that have expired in here. Some of these things were close to being expired the last time that I cleaned in here. So um, I need to get those things out so the um, grandkids don't reach for it. Just one road to take It's growing up over with green So easy to drive on But not what it seems The poison is spilling upstream And it's taking out Every living I purchased these glass meal prep containers on Amazon. I needed a good glass container that I would be able to prep some of mine and Michael's meals in. These ones you can microwave in, you can um, put them in the oven, they're dishwasher safe. You can put them in the refrigerator, the freezer. Um, they've got a really good seal on them. 
Um, anyways, um, since I've been on this diet, I like to um, meal prep um, two or three of our meals for lunch. So that way um, we're not tempted to run out and get something to eat when we are starving. It's already meal prepped. It's in the refrigerator. Just stick it in the oven or stick it in the microwave, whatever. So um, I decided to go ahead and get these so that way I can uh, meal prep with them. So I'm super excited to use them. Like I said, they've got a really good seal. Um, you're able to take that seal out of there and um, wash everything. I'll show you here in just a second. And you're able to um, take the seal out and wash everything separately. Um, and that was uh, two big thumbs up for me um, when I was looking for these meal preps because I don't like it when the seal gets um, dirty and you can't get in there and get it out. So anyways, these ones are really good. I will also link these down below for you if you're looking for some new meal prep. Um, I've switched over all of my Tupperware type um, um, containers into glassware because they are much healthier for you. Um, you don't want to put plastic Tupperware. I say Tupperware, but you know that's a brand. But you know that um, what I mean when I'm saying Tupperware, the plasticware. You don't want to stick plasticware into the microwave with food in it because it's going to leach some of the stuff that's in the plastic into your food and that's not healthy for you. So I've switched out all of my plasticware and um, I um, went over into using glassware only. So, um, and then these ones right here, I got these ones because I just want them mainly for meal prep, not for storing my food, my leftovers, but for meal prep foods. Um, that way we can distinguish. You know, when we look in the, in the refrigerator, I can say, just grab one of the meal prep ones. And then my husband knows exactly what to get. So anyways, really like these. Nice and sturdy. I'm going to get these washed up so that way I can meal prep later on today. Okay, all of Grace is letting me know that they have delivered the groceries and I'm going to go ahead and bring those in. And while I'm bringing those in, let's go ahead and go to week two of the plan. Okay, now week two is going to be a bit more intense for the week. Now, since you're acting as your own cleaning crew, you're going to need to put in the work this week. And it is a lot of work, I will say so myself. However, this is really going to jumpstart start your cleaning routine. Okay. So on Mondays, you're going to dust the whole house. Okay. And I give you a list of things to dust. On Tuesdays, you're going to vacuum the whole house. And I gave you a list of things and you just check them off. On Wednesdays, you're going to wet dust. Thursdays, you're going to do your bathrooms. Friday, you're going to do your kitchen. And on Saturday, you're going to wash your bedding and you're going to throw in your um, throw blankets. And you're also going to mop your floors. Okay, these things right here, yes, it's a lot of work, but these things are going to set your home up for success when you start your cleaning routines. Because soon after this, you will be doing um, your zone cleaning, and that's what's going to really keep your house nice and clean. Okay, so just follow the week two, check it off, follow each day and get those things done. And I guarantee you are going to feel so much better at the end of the week. 
Okay, let me jump in real quick because I want to clarify something for you. The week two routine that you're doing when you do it Monday through Saturday and you're doing a whole house clean, you are not going to be doing that every single time. This is just for your quick start. This is if you've gotten out of the habit or you need to um, build a routine or whatever the case is. This is just this one time for a quick start. Once you get everything cleaned, you're going to be able to maintain everything that you've done by doing your morning and your evening routine, the power hour, which is what we're going to talk about next, and also zone cleaning. Those things are going to keep your house clean. I promise this works. If you work the system the way that I'm telling you, it's going to work for you. So remember, week two, it's going to be intense, but it's not always going to be intense, only for this quick start. show you this tip real quick. Now I have shown this with my ground turkey and also my ground beef. Um, but you can also do the same tip. <laughs> you can also do this same tip with um, boneless skinless chicken breasts. So when you go ahead and you take it out of the package and you're going to put it into a Ziploc bag, go ahead and lay it all out flat. It's kind of rolled up in the package um, when you buy it from the store. But once you take it out, you can open it up and flatten it all out. Now, once I get it in there, I um, roll out as much air as I possibly can, and then I freeze it flat. So when it's time to pull it out of your freezer, you go ahead and pull it out, and I'm telling you, it thaws in minutes because um, it's rolled out so thin. So that's my tip for the day. I need a holiday, you know I got some money from
Okay, I have some organic um, apples that I bought from Costco and I'm going to go ahead and soak them in some vinegar and some water. This is just to help clean them, um, you know, get off any pesticides that may have gotten on there. Even though they're organic, you still want to be sure to clean them. So I'm going to go ahead and let them soak for just a few minutes, then I'll rinse them off and let them dry off. Okay, so before we start that delicious recipe, let's go ahead and talk about week three. On week three, you're going to do a power hour. The power hour is a list of five tasks that I quickly do in my home once a week. It takes me about an hour to do with the exception of the time that it takes to wash your bedding. Okay, that's going to take you a little bit longer. Now, I did a power hour video a couple of videos back, and I will link that right after this video so you can go see it. Um, so go ahead on week, through, on week three and do your power hour. Go through your home and follow the routine that I did on the video that I'm going to be posting after this one. So, okay, let's get into um, the kitchen, and I'm going to show you this delicious recipe. Okay, so this is one of our favorite dishes. It doesn't matter the weather outside, we love to eat this soup, but it's especially good when it's nice and chilly outside. All right, so this is called the Italian sausage artichoke and spinach soup. And then on the side, I have Parmesan crisps. So delicious, these crisps are heaven. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm pulling out all of my, um, my ingredients. Um, I like to set everything out and have it all nice and ready. One thing that I noticed that I do not have is a can of diced tomatoes, but that's okay because I had those extra tomatoes in the refrigerator and I need to go ahead and use those up. So this is a perfect time. Okay, so I'm going to preheat the oven to 400. Um, by the way, I'm going to leave this recipe down in the comments. However, I will put the um, ingredients to the recipe here on the screen. Um, however, I am doubling my recipe. I'm making a double recipe, um, so it should feed four. Um, that way we have some extra in the refrigerator um, for lunch tomorrow. So, okay, so I'm going to take my Italian sausage and I'm going to remove the skin or the casing, whatever you want to call it. Um, just slice it right down the side and remove that casing. Then I'll go ahead and I'll fry that up. Okay, so this dish right here, it, I think it's the, the um, Parmesan crisps that really make the dish. I mean, the soup is delicious. Don't get me wrong, but those crisps. <laughs> are so good <laughs> and you want to make it with um, real parmesan cheese don't use the powdered cheese um, you know that you put on your um, pasta and things like that um, don't use that one that's not going to make the crisps nice and crispy actually it'll probably just burn it so um, be sure that you're using um, either grated parmesan cheese that you grate 
or um, you know you can buy it in the store that's um, in a package and, and you see that it's nice and graded or um, I think mine is called I don't know it's not graded but they're like they're well you'll see here in just a second but anyways um, use that kind of cheese don't use the powdered cheese because um, honestly it does not work it doesn't melt down it just burns it so okay and I just added a little bit of olive oil to the bottom of the pan and I'm going to go ahead and fry these up um, and you want to you know break it all up you want nice big chunks but not huge chunks bite-sized chunks in there okay so um, I try to do it with my tongs but I'm going to take out my little handy thing masher thing like this and I'm going to mash this and um, get it all broken up in there then I'll add, you know, all the other ingredients and let everything simmer um, um, before I go ahead and put those crisps into the oven. Now remember I am doubling my recipe so that's why you're seeing me put in so much salt okay you wouldn't typically put in that much salt but um, I am doubling the recipe so in order to give it the flavor I've got to have that salt in there so I do use the pink Himalayan salt I just think it's healthier than the white salt um, so I do have that in there and then I'm going to use either you can either use chicken stock or you can use vegetable stock whichever one you prefer okay so let's go ahead and make these crisps all right see whatever this parmesan cheese is called you see how it's just like little matchsticks that's what i'm using here okay and you just pile it on into a little circle you can do it on parchment paper i have this and i you know it's got the perfect circle so i thought i would just go ahead and do it on this this is actually what i typically make it on okay and you just pile it up on there um kind of not too thick you know that one to the left might be a little thick but, um, you know, so that way it's nice and crispy. Um, if it's too thick, it's not going to be crispy. It's going to be more chewy. So go ahead and just pile that um, on there. Make it into little round circles. Put it in your oven. You're going to want to keep a very good eye on these, okay? Because um, they cook quickly. All right, then I just take my baby spinach. Um, if you're making it for two, you only need to use half of this container. Um, I'm going to use the whole container of five ounces because um, I'm making a double recipe you can see that my plastic is starting to melt from the heat <laughs> not good anyways um, 
So you just put it in there and then you allow everything to simmer and cook and get all those flavors. And while it's doing that, and I'm keeping a good eye on the, on the oven, um, I'm going to go ahead and clean up the mess that I've made. I hate after I eat to come in here to a huge mess that I have to clean up. Obviously, I'm going to have to do the dishes that we're eating off of and do the dishes that I cooked with. Um, but all this unnecessary mess of the knife and the cutting board and any trash, I like to get that cleaned up. So that way I don't have to face that as soon as I'm done eating. Because, you know, you're kind of tired <laughs> after you're done eating, especially after a hard day of cleaning. You want to, um, you know, limit as much mess as possible. Um, you know, kind of protect yourself, your future self after dinner self um, by giving your future self a little bit of help, if you know what I mean. Okay, so you just take this and you're going to dish it up. Then you're going to add those Parmesan um, crisps next to it. And oh my goodness, how delicious does this meal look? And let me tell you, it tastes even better than what it looks. So, I hope that this video has given you some inspiration to go and um, start that quick start. Um, I hope that it's the information that all of you guys have been asking me for. Um, don't forget to message me or email me for the printable and I will send that to you. That's going to make it super easy to get started. Okay, friends, I hope that you have a great day, a great Sunday, and I'm going to see you again in next Sunday's video. Until then, stay blessed, my friends.